Derek, thank you so much for joining us tonight, and thank you so much for your film. Um, we really loved it, and so happy you're here. My pleasure. Um, so the way I'm just going to explain how it's going to go, I'm just going to ask a couple questions, but we actually have mic runners in the audience, so if you have a question, just put up your hand, and we'll bring a mic to you. But I'll start us off by... Uh, a simple question, uh, but also a compliment. Um, I really love how the film starts off as quite uh, almost a seemingly innocent love story, and it unravels into a very dark place that takes us into these places where love, you wouldn't assume that love would take us. Uh, so can you tell us a little bit about your take on love and, and the story that you've written? Uh, it's, it was intention to, to, for the film to start off as like, you know, very innocent, deep people just seemingly in love. And then eventually, as we watch that, you know, their, their selfless action is actually hurting another two person. So that was the intention. Because I, I think that me and Jimmy, the, the co-director of the film, we tend, to, we tend to like films that are a little bit darker. And uh, it's just our taste in, in films that we like. Films that, after you watched it, you leave the cinema having this kind of heavy weight on you. That's kind of the type of film that we like. So I think this film kind of reflects our taste. You also have these wonderful, playful moments, you know, with the laundromat worker. And, um, so if you could also tell us about your choice of style and, and the diversity of the different range that you have and why you're uh, Yeah, because like, we, try, we try to treat the four films like sport uh, uh, independent short films in a way, even though the characters and the stories are all uh, intertwined. But it, stylistically, we wanted to shoot the, uh, four different stories in four different styles. So it's like the first story was a lot of llama takes. It's just like we wanted to be as natural as possible to have the actors do their work and, and just be like you know you're just watching two people just strolling through the city. And uh, the second story was a lot more. There's a lot more uh, fantastical elements in it because it deals with the girls. Um, fantasy and how she has all these little dream, daydreams of hers. So uh, the third one, it's, it's, um, it's very repressed in terms of the colors and like the way we shot it. And then the third one is just, uh, we added a lot of um, film noise to the, to the texture of the film just to make it more raw and more um, suiting for this, for the story. Um, I also, I'm, I'm going to shift gears a little bit because I think you have a lot of different influences in your, in your history. Um, uh, you're, you know, you come from a famous family with a famous father. Uh, you've also worked uh, extensively in many different roles with um, Peng Ho Chang and um, Peng Brothers. And um, I was hoping you could elaborate on your, on your background a little bit and how that influenced your filmmaking. Uh, it's it's kind of hard to pinpoint what exactly influenced me. I think I think actually the biggest influence for me was uh, um, watching a lot of different movies. I think that's actually the big the, the single best education that a film, filmmaker can have is to watch as much movie as possible. I mean, Tarantino is the best example. I mean, a guy before he became the famous director that he is, he was just like a clerk in a, rent, a video rental shop, right? So I mean, watching movie it has been the biggest influence on me. And by having the, the, the good chance of working with a lot of different directors, for me, I picked up a lot of um, uh, um, their, their, their skills when I, when I worked with them. So it, it's, it's, it, I think it's a, it's, it's a very good thing for me because I, 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 before I became a director, I was working as an actor, so I had the chance to work with a lot of different directors. So it's, it's, it's a very good uh, advantage. Yeah. I think we have a question in the audience here. Hi. Uh, hi. Um, this is on. Uh, anyway, uh, the third segment I thought um, had the tone of Kieslowski. Um, I was thinking about a, a short film about love. love. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and uh, even down to the little scene in the cafe, uh, I thought that that was a nice little echo of that. I don't know if that was intentional at all. Uh, it's it, sorry, just to answer the question first. It's not intentional, but he is one of my favorite directors, so I think it's just somehow reflected that. Because I really like that film a lot too, the short film of a love. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, and just the, the sense of um, where people are attached and they don't quite connect, but they long to connect all, all the more. And I, I thought that that uh, repression uh, was captured so nicely. Um, it, it was just uh, beautiful, and uh, it's been years since he's 
he's been gone anyway, but it was nice to see that. I was wondering in the, uh, in the light of that, uh, what other filmmakers have uh, captured your interest, your passion? Uh, right now, just as a, a dilettante myself, I've noted that Asian cinema over the last 20 years has captured that sort of spirit of creative synergy that one used to see in the films from Eastern Europe before the fall of communism. And I was just wondering what, what's inspired you? Uh, I, I've actually, I'm a big, um, I, I, my foremost passion is actually European cinema. So I watch a lot of European cinema. And during my study in Toronto, actually I, I was at the Cinematheque all the time because they had a lot of good programs on Euro European uh, yeah, directors. Yeah. So that's, that's actually one of my biggest influence. So I, I think it reflects on my film. Yeah, uh, just the, the beginning, actually, I thought the way that you captured Hong Kong sort of reminded me of Wong Kar Wai, in a sense, uh, with the the way that you captured it at night. I yeah. thought that was quite beautiful, too. Yeah, Wong Kar Wai is actually another one of my favorite directors yeah. as well. So just like, I think, we'll, we'll, because Wong Kar Wai is the first um, Hong Kong director that really draws a lot on European cinema. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's yeah. why, and, and for me, it's like, I came from the same background. I, I love all the... French New Wave and yeah, yeah, all the contemporary yeah. European cinema. So I think that's yeah, that's how that's how I grew up as a filmmaker. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Oh, there's a question over here. Um, I, um, thank you. That was lovely. I would just like to know how you uh, developed into a director from acting. What the transition was like for you, and uh, if you're working on anything locally. If not, what's uh, what's next for you? Uh, I, my second film is in post-production right now, and um, from, I think having uh, the chance to work as an actor really helped me when I was directing my own film because I think I understand how the actors um, think when they're on set and uh, what, they, what they would feel when they're reading the script. So uh, I think that enables me to communicate better with my actors, so I think that's the biggest advantage. And how did you actually develop the, the tools? Because uh, I I think well I just I basically tried. Can I ask a question? Because yeah. uh, he just said, how did you develop the tools from uh, to become a uh, director? Uh, I basically jumped on any chance I could uh, participate in any kind of role in a film production. I think that is very vital if you want to learn the whole craft. I mean, because I I worked as a continuity assistant director editor. Um, I built set for people before, so I really try to work in different position in, in the whole filmmaking process. So I try to learn as mu as much as possible. So that really helps. So for, for for me, when I was directing, I think I understand what every department um, um, wants me to give them. So. Yeah. So it was all on set. You never like locked yourself up in an institution for three years or anything. You just go on set and get involved. Yeah. So he didn't lock himself up in an institution that was like, <laughs> um, I actually forgot to describe, if, I'm sorry there's no mics in the balcony, if someone wants to ask a question in the balcony, just shout it out. Any balcony questions? No? Um, do I have another question? No? Oh, Gloria? Uh, hold on, wait, can you wait for a mic? That was a really lovely film. Thank you, Thank you so much for making it. Um, and I really, really enjoyed all the different sort of moods and everything like that. I just have a kind of a small question about the mannequin. <laughs> what prompted the choice of the mannequin? Like, why was she into them? I mean, I thought it was hilarious and cute and funny. Just, yeah. just well, to be honest, the first reason why we did that is just to make the story a little bit more funny. But, um, but. There's also another reason why we did it, because for, for us, I mean, when we have a crush on someone, like when we secretly admire someone, we don't actually really know, a lot of times we don't really know anything about that person. It's just this mental image we have ourselves of that person. So we thought it would be quite interesting to, to use a mannequin to, to sort of express that, that, that kind of um, mental projection that we have of someone we have a, uh, a crush on. So that's one of the reasons why we have the mannequin. I mean, because if the story, we, we, we didn't use mannequin, we used Eddie Pang, the actor, to, to, to do the role instead, it would 
be a lot less interesting. So, thank you. I have another question uh, about uh, I, what, I, what I also thought was kind of funny. I didn't know if it was an inside joke or, you know, that you've casted your father as <laughs> playing like the worst, darkest role. I mean, he's a famous guy. He's really funny. We all you know, love him on screen. And then he's kind of the least desirable character in this role. And how you convinced him to uh, take that on? Uh, he didn't actually really need any convincing. I just asked him, I'm like, Dad, it's my first film, you know, I want, I want you to be a part of it, so, you know, just come and do this little role. I mean, I have no money to pay you. And, uh, and uh, it's not a big role, and yeah, I have no money, but just be there, because I want him to be a part of it, so. And he just said yes right away. Yeah. Okay, uh, Derek, um, is there anything you'd like to tell us? Uh, you know, any last words? Uh, I, I'm not really good at speaking, so I think the film speaks for itself. So I just, I just hope everybody enjoyed it. So. Okay. Well, I wanted to let everyone know that Derek's actually going to be doing a more intimate talk on Thursday. So please join us for that. That's during the day. Check your book for it. Um, we're actually going to be going to a reception at the Crown Princess right now uh, to celebrate both Real Asian's birthday and Derek's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> So come join, the party. So join us for that. If you exit at the south doors, there'll be um, some red balloons. You can just follow your way. It's probably like a five, ten minute walk, really close. Um, Crown Princess on Bay Street, and there's going to be some delicious treats. So see you there. Thank, Thank you, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.